How's it going, you guys? I'm here today to talk to you once again about org mode. Specifically, we're going to talk today about their table functionality. Tables in org mode can be used for what you'd expect in most other markup languages like HTML and Markdown for entering tabular data. You know, kind of like your name, your age, all that sort of stuff. Now, another thing that you kind of get with Emacs and org mode that I find quite powerful is the spreadsheet functionality. You can also manipulate the data um, using the editor itself. So deleting, adding, removing different tables, rows, fields, that sort of stuff. But you also get spreadsheet functionality for doing references and calculations, which I find super helpful for doing my finances, as well as the usual sort of small level uh, table functionality that you would kind of hope for when you're referencing other tables. You can do a lot of that there. Um, and in addition, you can do some really advanced features where you take these tables, you can pass them to an interpreter, use a programming language of your choice to do some more advanced features, and then spit that out as a table that you can use later. This is one of the things that I find extremely powerful with Emacs and lets you kind of come up with ideas, write it all down so you can reference it later and then get the results that you want and not really think too much about what's the best tool for the job. You can kind of just work with it, let the data flow as you want and reference it later. Tables are one of those things that I myself have used more and more over the years and have slowly fallen in love with. It's been one of those things that I think org really gets right and hopefully by the end of this video you guys will feel the same way. We'll start off with some very basic functionality, just designing a table, then we'll move into more advanced stuff like manipulating the table using Emacs, and then we'll move into references, calculations, and the spreadsheet functionality, and then finally we'll move into the interpreter level stuff that's uh, a bit more advanced and extremely powerful. Now without any more delays, let's get into the video. So first off, let's look at creating a table. So tables can be initialized using a quick little just horizontal bar like so. And if you just hit tab, boom, you've got another table just started. So usually what I like to do is I usually go ahead and start entering some data. So let's say we want to make our heading line name and age, and then I can hit tab and it will start letting me enter in data. Now, often you want to make like a little header so it's a bit nicer because if I just entered in Gavin, uh, you guys don't need to know my age. I'm, I'm For all you know, I'm 100. Uh, and then I could keep going. But usually you want something to kind of distinguish these two. And so to do that, you can do a vertical bar and then a dash and hit tab, and it will sort of fill that in for you and create a little header. So that's basically what I say here. And you can navigate these guys using tab, kind of as you'd expect, and then you can use enter um, to kind of uh, go to the next level. Now moving on to a more advanced feature, we have the ability to actually manipulate these tables. Um, so for example, if we wanted to say move things around, you can use shift and the arrow keys to kind of move around a field. Uh, and we'll go ahead and undo that. And you could do the same obviously with any of these fields. Now you can also use meta to kind of move say an entire column around or an entire row around. Um, and in addition, you can use shift in combination with meta with down to add one, and then with up to delete it. My up key is broken, so I can't show that. Um, and then you can do some extra stuff with rows as well. So right would add a row, left would delete a row, or sorry, column, which is quite powerful and quite helpful for sort of the general manipulation stuff. Obviously, it depends on where the cursor is. But yeah, so that's kind of the main workflow for sort of manipulating the table is using the arrow keys with different modifiers. You can obviously do the regular sort of marking, deleting, and moving stuff around as you'd expect. Now another thing when it comes to modifying the different data is that sometimes you want to copy paste and so the way that this is done is actually pretty interesting. So you can do control space here and kind of move your cursor around and so you can do kind of row and column selection like this. So while it does show that I'm going across two lines, I'm actually selecting from this little rectangle right here. And so I can do control C, control X, and then any of these keys above us. So let's do alt W. And so as you can see, it said that I copied. And so now if I do control C, control X, control Y, it will paste that data. Um, and I can kind of do, say for example, if I did here and went down to here and did control C, control X, alt W, and copied like we just did, and then do control C, control X, control Y, um, we can copy and paste just the column right here. Um, so this can be very helpful and very powerful if you guys want to do some more like modifications and moving things around without uh, disrupting the actual layout too much. 
Now I'll admit I don't use this all the time, but it is helpful on the occasions where I kind of feel like I need it. And now let's move on to generating tables. Generating tables is actually a really cool feature within Emacs. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. This is just two of them. So uh, one of the ways is using control and then the vertical bar. And so you'll see it right down here in my like what I'm typing. So you can kind of turn anything that's comma separated or tab separated into a table. Um, so this is really useful. Like I mentioned, if I just copy pasted, say a list from a website or something like that, I can uh, select the region, do control C vertical bar, and it will turn that into a table. Now, another example is using uh, alt X org table import. And then I can just go to results. This is just an example CSV that I have right here. This was kind of a bad spot to import it. Um, let's undo that and import it here. So we'll just get the same thing that we did last time. We import it, and you, as you can see right here, we imported uh, the entire table, and we can kind of navigate it as you'd expect and uh, move things around as you'd expect. Um, yeah. And so this is kind of a nice way to kind of take like a CSV or a TSV, like I mentioned here, tab separated value, and kind of import it as you hope. Okay, now we can get into the actual calculations, which is one of the really cool things about org mode. So there is a few different ways to enter them, but we'll go through them one at a time. So there's control equals, which will let you enter a calculation for a column. So right now, uh, this is pretty arbitrary, but let's go ahead and just change this to 10, 12, and then let's make this column some sort of a calculation. So what we can do is we can do control C equals, and then we can say that it is, that this column is column one plus 10. Hit enter, and it will apply that for the column. If we go ahead and remove that, because that doesn't really matter, there we go. Now we get the sort of a calculation that you'd expect. So each of these guys plus 10. And so the dollar sign is how you specify a row. Now you can also do an extra calculation, say if you wanted to do control U, control C equals, then you can make it specific to the field and say, let's just make this field equal to 10 minus 20, um, which equals negative 10. <laughs> um, and as you can see, they're all added down here into this table FM, which I think is short for table format, it's kind of what they're going for. And so this is kind of used to do some calculations and kind of just display the results up here. Now you can kind of uh, recalculate them if you wanted to modify them. So let's say we minus this to 10, and then we do control C, control C. Or if you want to just do it specific to a field, you can do control C star, which is useful. But really these sort of general things I'm just showing off for the sake of it. We'll get into some more advanced and actually useful uh, ways to sort of modify these values in just a second. So when we move on to references, we actually get some really advanced features. And so this kind of makes the actual calculations a bit nicer. So as you can see right down here, I make a small reference to the second row in the second column. Remember that dollar sign indicates that this is the column and the at symbol indicates that this is a row. Now there's a few different ways that you can manipulate them. As I mentioned here, you can do control C uh, quote, single quote, control C single quote will give you the current calculation. So right now we have this set to calculate to one, but we can instead say that we want to do plus, and then let's say we want to do at one uh, dollar sign two. And so it will indicate where that is. Now, instead, let's like go ahead and change that to the right and then down. And so now it will be one plus that entry. And we can do control C, control C to save that. And there we go. And when we recalculate it using control C, control C, you'll see that it is computed. Now, just like before, we can edit it once again and say maybe we want to uh, change this to a 10 or 101, I guess. There we go. We'll make it 10. And then control C, control C, and then we can reevaluate it. I find this sort of a workflow to be much better than the uh, one I talked about before, um, but it's most effective when you're using it with references, I find. Now, if you ever get confused, you can do a control C uh, curly brace. And this will kind of give you a bit of a layout and kind of breakdown of what you're looking at. If you want to know what it is for one of the fields, you can do a control C question mark. And like I said before, control C, control C aligns things. But once again, here's a little breakdown of how references work. So at references a row, the dollar sign references a column. If you want to reference something, say like very last element in a range, and you can use the greater than symbol. And then if you want to specify a range, you can use two dots. 
So here's a really good example. Now, an alternative notation, instead of having to control C quote or any of these other things, you can actually just do a colon equals to enter in a calculation. So here we're saying that we want the second row in the first column, so that's this guy, all the way to the third row in the second column. So we're selecting this region right here. All right, and so if I just hit tab, boom, that expands and we get the actual calculation. And as you can see, it's one right here. If we go through, you'll notice that it lines up with this one, this guy, this guy, this guy, and we created a range from that. And as you can see, that calculation ends up down here. So this is a really quick way to just sort of write some quick shorthand if you just wanted to do like a quick calculation like we were talking about before, like 10 plus 20 tab, you get the calculation, kind of like what you'd expect. Now, what if we want to reference other tables? Now, this is a really awesome feature. I use this all the time for the accounting stuff that I was talking about before. So let's say we have uh, some things and costs. So we say their car costs X amount of money, house costs X amount of money. And so we could have some calculations down here, but in this case, we don't. And then we can actually reference it. So here we use remote to indicate that this is a reference. We're referencing costs, which comes from up here. We labeled this table as costs. And then we're saying that we want the element right here, all the way to this element, which uh, really is only two things that I could have said, but I created a range from it. So second row, all the way to the third row, both in the second column. And then I am using vsum to sum these results. And as you can see right here, if I um, remove that, or let's just remove that and recalculate it, you'll see that the results align and we can sort of uh, change this to five and recalculate and we get the updated result. Now, if you're wondering where uh, all of the powers of adding, subtracting, and everything come from, it's using a thing in Emacs called calc, um, which you guys can find in the info. If I go ahead and take a look at it, it's a stack-based calculator. Um, it's very powerful. I'm pretty sure it even has like Taylor series generation, a bunch of different stuff like generating graphics, as you can see. Basically, anything you see here, arithmetic, it can do linear algebra. Um, it could do a lot of advanced math stuff that you guys can put in your tables. Obviously, I don't take advantage of that all the time, um, but from time to time, it can be super useful. Now, when calc isn't enough, this is when I reach out to Org Babel. Org Babel is a way to sort of execute code from within an org file. Um, I haven't made a video on it, but there's lots of videos out there for those of you who are interested. Um, but there's pretty cool stuff that you can do with it. So let's go ahead and do a really simple example using a table. So the really simple one is just generating results. So here I have a source block using Python, and I say return a uh, list containing the values from zero all the way up to five. And so if I hit Control C, Control C to execute it, I'll get a range of zero, one, two, three, and four. Now we can also uh, take data and pass it in. So for example, I have a table here. I have named it. Note that I didn't use the table name. This is just a generic name that we can use. This is how you can label basically everything in org mode is using the hash plus name. And so we named it messages and they're from and to somebody. And then we actually take that, and as you can see right here with var, we're actually passing that in as a variable called data. And we're actually using Emacs Lisp this time, not just Python. Um, so for those of you guys that don't have Python installed, very impressive that you don't have it installed, but uh, you can actually do this with just regular Emacs Lisp that will work everywhere. Um, and so basically what I do here is I iterate over that data, which we've passed in up here, and we go through, and we go through each row, and we print from to and we get the first element that's given to us, which is Jim, and the second element, which is John. All right, and so if we go ahead and execute that, you'll see we get the results of from Jim to John, from Tim to Drake, from Griff to Step. <laughs> uh, questionable names there at the end. Hey, just coming in to interrupt the video to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform. When it comes to learning, a lot of us jump to things like tutorials and lectures and really miss out on being able to absorb everything that we're being told. This is where Brilliant really stands out. It gives you interactive, real-world examples that you can think through and problem solve and really retain the information that you're learning. In this video, I show you how you can use org tables and integrate them with different programming languages and interpreters. If this is a new concept to you, I highly recommend taking a look at the Computer Science Fundamentals course from them that goes a bit into the the basic ideas of programming that a lot of new programmers can learn a lot from and you can start applying what we talk about at the end of this video in those advanced features as you go. If furthering your career, knowledge, or education interests you, I highly recommend giving a look at Brilliant.
To try everything Brilliant has to offer now for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Gavin Freeborn, or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Once again, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's think of a practical application for those of us that do programming. So in this case, let's say we have a database, and in this case I have one that is an SQLite database containing multiple restaurants. So if I do control C, control C, we'll see that we can get the results like we were doing before as a table. Now this is a little messy, so we can go sort of clean this up by executing this, which will actually filter out by the important data. Now this is quite good, and we can kind of, like we were saying before, manipulate these uh, different guys as you'd expect. So kind of adding a row, removing a row, if we want to filter down to maybe just like the location, there you go. Now while exporting these results is useful, sometimes you want to take them in as input. So let's go ahead and do that with another SQLite database. So we have a table right here. It says who and the task that they have. We have two tasks for Gavin, that's me, and then other, some other tasks for some other people. Now in this case, I'm going to uh, set a variable and we're going to set that variable to be called some data, and it's going to take our table, as we can see up here, called test table. Uh, and we do some extra settings. I'm not really going to get, dig into those. And we say that the DB is just a temporary database that we'll be using. And we'll say that we're going to drop this table if it already exists, um, just for this demo's purpose, and then we will import it. And so now if we control C, control C on this, we will see that it's able to select who and task where the who is Gavin. And so as you can see right here, it selected just the ones that were tasks for me. Now, just to prove that I'm not making this up, we can go ahead and use Emacs to actually open this. And if we open up the database, you can see that it's all the original data that we originally entered in. You can do a lot of this stuff with basically any SQLite database, um, as well as any SQL in general database. Um, there's a bunch of information at both of these links that you can find in these show notes. And finally, we'll move on to another advanced feature using the org babel integration. Um, so this is a bit more of a breakdown of what's going on here. So in this case, we're going to use the R programming language to do some mathematical stuff. Do note that the ESS package is what's used to give us R source code functionality. Once you have the ESS package installed, you can also set up the org babel functionality for R by just uh, executing this elisp. And here, let's go ahead and dig into it. So here we have a table which has each month of the year and then what the temperature was. And so we can kind of plot this out. So here we're going to once again, take that table up there, turn it into data. We're gonna say that our results will be a graphical file. We'll say that that file is gonna be a PNG um, and that we will export it. I think that's what the exports was. I can't actually remember what I entered that part in for. We'll plot it and then we give it a legend for the plot and we can hit control C, control C. And then you can use, as I mentioned down here, control C, control X, control V to preview it. And as you can see, we generated a very nice graph um, to get the data that we wanted. I know that GNU plot also can do this sort of stuff, but if you guys wanted to do statistics and stuff, um, R is there. And you can use something like GNU Octave if you wanted to do uh, linear algebra that maybe Kelt can't do. Um, or anything like that. There's a lot of functionality out there. If this interests you guys, uh, be sure to check out Cymax. I think that's how they expect you to pronounce it, um, which is basically an Emacs setup meant for uh, scientists and engineers, um, which is really cool. I've looked at that in the past. Obviously, for me, it doesn't really make sense because I'm so used to Emacs, but uh, for those of you that aren't, it might be a very interesting starting point. So where does this functionality leave us? Well, in the end, we have quite a lot of power that we can use to automate our lives, do things like financial calculations, daily life calculations, very advanced stuff for maybe generating a graph or a plot. If you guys wanna learn more about how I use it, maybe how I do some of my finances, um, and maybe some more advanced features that you can do with org mode and tables, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Now, before I let you all go, I wanted to give a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon and GitHub sponsors. You guys mean the world to me and you guys have done so much to support the channel and kind of keep things going uh, in between sponsors, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm.